On 26 December 2024, a video emerged of a new Chinese fast jet combat aircraft making a test flight. That the PLA was investigating a next generation aircraft without vertical stabilizers, think B2 or B21, had been known for some time, with an aircraft displaying a similar overall shape seen in 2021 in Chengdu, Sichuan province. Displaying the external features most expect from the next generation of fast jet combat aircraft, this large aircraft, clearly identifiable when compared to the two-seat J-20S chase plane, presents some interesting questions for analysts. Is it a fighter, interceptor, bomber or strike aircraft? That the video was quickly and openly showed on the internet tells us that it was likely a coordinated shaping and influencing exercise by the PLA. With that in mind, it was very likely not the aircraft's first flight. What do we currently know or can reasonably deduce from the video and likely PLA thinking on employing next generation combat aircraft? G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, an assessment of China's sixth generation combat aircraft from Chengdu. How might it be used operationally? I've reached out to some specialists to assist me with this briefing. 26 December 2024 was notable from a PLA Air Force watching perspective, not only for Chengdu Aircraft Corporation's new prototype, but also Shenyang Aircraft Corporation's new prototype. This briefing will only cover the CAC prototype, which I'll refer to as the J-36. Note I'll be discussing what defines a sixth generation aircraft shortly. Many watching this brief will be aware of the design attributes I'm about to highlight. So for you, it's just a refresher before getting into the assessment of operational use. For others, this is an important primer. The most obvious initial feature is the lack of vertical stabilizers, reducing the radar cross-section, reducing drag, and improving fuel efficiency. A dorsal air intake for the middle engine, more on that soon, and likely but not confirmed, a two-seater, possibly in side-by-side -side configuration, reminiscent of the F-111 or Sukhoi Su-34. It is a distinctive diamond-shaped double delta wing, which is not designed for dogfighting or significant subsonic performance. A heavy-duty undercarriage, which would be needed for an aircraft with an estimated maximum takeoff weight in the 50 to 55 tonne range. And three engines. At this stage, the engines are likely the same and are the WS-10 Charlies rated at between 140 to 150 kilonewtons or 32 to 34,000 pounds of thrust. In the future, we should expect the aircraft to be fitted with the WS-15s, which are likely to be in the 160 to 180 kilonewton range or 36,000 to 40,000 pounds. For reference, the F-119 engine in the F-22 puts out 156 kilonewtons 35,000 pounds, according to the manufacturer, Pratt & Whitney, or 98 kilonewtons or 22,000 pounds of dry thrust. Three high dry thrust engines, together with the overall design, should deliver high Mach 1 supercruise, together with significant electrical power generation, critical in supporting its next generation avionics, sensors and electronic warfare systems. And finally, in terms of weapons, there are three internal weapons bays. Two outboard internal weapons bays appear to have a similar capacity to the J-20's main internal weapons bay. Each of these are approximately five metres long and one metre wide, with each able to accommodate two PLL-15s or three PLL-15-E long-range air-to-air missiles. And a central internal weapons bay approximately six to seven metres in length and two metres wide and likely divided into two sections with a total capacity of four to six PL-17 long-range air-to-air missiles with a range of out to around 400 kilometres or two large air-to-surface missiles or four smaller air-to-surface missiles or UAVs and drones or a combination of all of these. These bays should allow for a wide variety of weapons to be carried internally, allowing for a range of target sets to be engaged by a single J-36. As dogfighting ability is not important, a gun is not needed. With these characteristics in mind, is the Chengdu J-36 
a sixth generation aircraft? Well, there is no official definition for what a sixth generation aircraft is, just as there is none for fifth generation aircraft. However, the current thinking, plus or minus, of the characteristics include no vertical stabilizers to deliver all aspect stealth, significant power generation here delivered by three engines, with the engines delivering high dry thrust to achieve high Mach 1 supercruise, and likely significant use of artificial intelligence including for controlling collaborative combat aircraft or loyal wingmen. Supporting and sometimes operating alongside the PLA's next generation of combat aircraft will be the current fifth generation, including the J-20 and J-20S. The J-20 has shown the PLA thinking on air-to-air -air combat with a strong focus on beyond visual range engagements and controlling loyal wingman aircraft, in particular via the J-20S, and so, no internal guns are required. And the PLA Air Force's version of the Naval J-35, the J-35 Alpha, which is likely to enter service shortly and which will likely be better equipped for within visual range combat. Other aircraft, such as force multipliers that would work closely with the J-36 will include the new KJ-3000 Airborne Early Warning and Control Aircraft, and the WZ-9 Divine Eagle UAV. Now this features a novel twin fuselage design with large ventral tail fins and an extra long main wing extending across the rear fuselage. This is likely a specialized airborne early warning platform, but designed to work with other manned aircraft to detect stealth aircraft by way of a wideband electronically scanned radar, providing long range, but with lower accuracy than other radars. Some specifications include an endurance of over 20 hours and a ceiling of around 18,000 metres or 60,000 feet. What is the J-36's likely primary area of operations unrefueled? I'd suggest the target sets include Japan, the second island chain, primarily Guam, and the South China Sea. This would then require the J-36 to have a strike radius, a combined aircraft radius plus the standoff weapon range, and without in-flight refuelling, of around 3,000 kilometres or 1,900 miles. Of course, it could be further. A quick note before the summary, what isn't a sixth generation aircraft is the White Emperor movie prop that was on display at the 2024 Zhuhai Air Show. It's amazing what some people on YouTube, X or Reddit, etc. will do for attention. However, if I was to give a name to the PLA's sixth generation aircraft, I'd call it the Jade Emperor, Yu Huang. In summary, what characterises a sixth generation aircraft is a combination of a number of features. From what we know about the J-36 so far, there is nothing to suggest it is not a sixth generation aircraft given the general consensus. The J-36, should it be brought into service, is not a fighter, interceptor, bomber or strike aircraft. It is a multi-role or swing role, long range, low observable platform to penetrate deeply through the most sophisticated air defence systems. It is likely the J-36 will be employed as a single type strike package, at least in the initial sorties, to make best use of its stealth and flight profile capabilities that is its all aspect stealth, long range high Mach 1 supercruising, and without other aircraft compromising it. Of course, what we've seen so far is a flying prototype, nothing more. What capabilities might it have in five years time when it enters initial production, if indeed it makes it that far, and then what might it look like in five years after that when it reaches maturity? Its design will likely be allow for new engines, sensors, etc., that the PLA will develop over its life. New engines may include variable cycle or adaptive cycle technology, which is designed to operate efficiently under mixed flight conditions through subsonic, transonic, and supersonic. But would the J-36 need that? And finally, forget about Cobra maneuvers and airshow displays. That's not what a next generation combat aircraft is designed for. Now that concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe, like and share and don't forget to click the notification button so you don't miss the next briefing.
you never know what it will be about. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from members. Until next time, Fire Lady Sarah.